What's up, Wackadoos? Welcome back. So this week, we're going to be working on building the headache rack that I've been talking about. I was able to get my material and borrow my buddy's tube bender. As well as last weekend, I was able to get an actual air compressor that'll run all the equipment that's in the garage, and now we can actually move forward. But a few things have changed since our last video, so I'm going to catch you guys up on what I've been doing on the truck since then. The first thing was I was able to go ahead and get our fuel system all buttoned back up, and I was able to get my fuel necks connected. I got both electric fuel pumps installed, although not wired, and then I ran my line right back to the 350. So when it comes time to actually run the electric pumps, those are good to go. They're all bracketed in place, and the 350 now runs on the tank that it's going to be eventually running the electric pump. So now we can fire the truck up and move it around when the time comes. I also pulled all of our hardware out on both sides of the truck and replaced all these with quarter 20 stainless steel button heads. So drilling and tapping took a long time, but I feel like we ended up with something that's a lot more easy to maintain. We don't have to worry about all of our hardware backing off and snapping and so on and so forth. And actually, I, I kind of love the look. It looks kind of the riveted style. Anyway, after a couple of months of putting off buying an air compressor, I finally got an air compressor and was able to finish sandblasting the project that killed my first air compressor, which was the vent shades that go over the windows. And while I'm not super impressed with them because they are still a little warped from where they were installed on the previous doors, uh, they're on the truck. And I can always replace them with some nice ones later if I want to, but these ones didn't cost me anything. But most importantly, every four feet, we went ahead and welded in some of these big 12,000 pound D-rings. So Cody and Daniel came over and helped me out. Cody welded a bunch of these while wearing Crocs. That was kind of impressive. So now we have the ability to tie something down and I can move on with knowing that I've allocated the space on the deck for the next step. And now that I got a real job, I was able to go ahead and buy the material that I needed to make my headache rack. My buddy Tom loaned me his affordable bender, which I've seen some of the results of his other projects. And if this turns out to be a thing, I might have to invest in building one of these myself. But so far, I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen, and I think we're gonna jump right into it. So I've got a piece of donor material right here. We're gonna do some practice bends on before committing to anything. I'm gonna take down some measurements, start marking things out. In a perfect world, I would have a little bit more time with this bender and a little bit more consistent material, and I would be able to try and get everything done in one shot from left to right of the bed. But because of a two-part problem, A, I don't know this bender well enough to try and get away with that considering the price of material right now, and B, I can only haul 10 footers in my PT Cruiser. So I gotta go ahead and butt these things together and make each section out of two pieces of bar and weld them, which is not that big a deal considering they're gonna be heavily welded all throughout. But that means that I can go ahead and bend up our driver's side equivalent to the one that we just mocked up. So I'm gonna take my measurements and go ahead and bend it. So now they look pretty good, but I need to go ahead and get them tacked together so we can mock them up into place. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and tack them to the bed for now before I make my removable mounting points. That way we can go ahead and work on the rear bars. But at least we got the first two done. So now I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the bottom so that they're gonna sit at their final height before we put in the plates that they're gonna be mounted to permanently. But that'll give us the ability to tack it to the bed directly and start working on our other tubes for now. So cut it, tack it, move on to the rear main tubes. So we're gonna be using a couple easy techniques to try and get our hoop set up for the rear hoop. And that's using the floor to keep one of our planes level. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is we have to merge the two pieces of pipe together, which we're gonna be using a piece of angle iron and a couple of clamps for. So where we need the two, hi baby. Where we're gonna be making the two junction together, we're gonna go ahead and clamp them to a piece of angle iron, so that they, hi baby, <laughs> to try and keep them nice and straight so we can go ahead and get them tacked into place. So with a couple of extra clamps and a couple of pieces of angle iron, you can make a really effective tool for laying two pieces of straight pipe together and merging them seamlessly. Now put it on the truck. So there we have it. You can see that we chased the radius of the cab as best we could, more specifically the back window on the front main tube and on the rear main tube, it looks much different. Now I kind of like it, but you'll see why that's important when we switch to the other side. On the other side, we have our exhaust that's coming through the bed mocked up in place. So we needed to add enough radius that we're gonna be able to move around the exhaust freely. 
Now that I'm pleased with both the primary and secondary tubes for our hoops, I'm gonna go ahead and lay in our horizontal uh, window protector. It's basically a bar just to make it so that any payload that might slide forward isn't able to hit the back window without having to hit that tube first. So we're gonna be using our rims from what we cut off already, and we're gonna be doing the same technique that we used before to try and mate the two pieces of tube, and then we're gonna go ahead and notch them to fit in below the back window horizontally. So let's get on it. With Kate's help, I was able to get our horizontal bar laid into place. Now, our distance between the actual bed bar and the cab is very tight, and that might come back to bite us later if the flex from a payload on the bed brings them too close. And I have some plans to deal with that if that happens, and I'll let you know if it does. But for now, I like the look as it sits, and I like the tolerance being pretty close because in our unloaded mode, it makes it look nice and cleanly. Now, I have a bunch of ideas for what I can use this space for, for emergency lighting, light bars for loading and unloading, and potentially like an arrow, uh, an arrow strobe so that we can load and unload safely on maybe the side of the road. That's all gonna come into play later. For now, everything's tacked into place, and I think tomorrow we're gonna work on making the brackets so that we can actually make this thing removable with nut certs throughout the bed. I got my brackets all made up, and I'm starting to drill the holes. I got an idea where the tube's gonna go. I'm gonna slide these up underneath where the tubes are currently intersecting the bed. And then we can go ahead and tack those in place and we can drill and set up our holes. And we're gonna be using nut certs. So let's start by just drilling all this stuff out. Okay, now with all the holes drilled, I go ahead and tack these in place, mark my holes down onto the bed, and then we can start installing our nut certs. So we're gonna start by getting everything tacked. Now that it's fully welded, I can start the process of smoothing out the spots where I had to bridge the material together so it looks more smooth and cohesive and removing any little BBs and sharp edges and stuff like that. I'm also gonna be drilling a couple of holes in the tube feet so that wires that run through this bar can go ahead and run through the bed out of the bottom of this thing so you don't have to look at the wires and less likelihood of them getting caught on stuff. So I'm gonna start cleaning this up and then I can worry about making all of our mountain holes threaded. That thing's all cleaned up. Now, as much as I would really love to paint it, uh, I am waiting on a few more things and I might have to weld a couple more tabs on here. And I still have to drill all my holes for running wires through it. But for now, I'm working on threading these holes here. So you can see, there's a hole through the bed, but I don't wanna have to try and get through it because then I have to access it from the underside of the bed. So what we're doing is we're installing nut certs. And these are a crush style threaded insert and the result will look like this so that is a high pressure fitted threaded hole where the original hole was so now we've got our hole here we use this tool and then we thread this on the end and insert it in place and then squeeze it like a rivet There you have it. So there it is. Obviously we've got our exhaust mock-up stack sticking out there. Ended up buying a little bit more room. I went ahead and I rolled this tube back a little bit before welding it so that we had more room between the cab and the tubing so it doesn't rub. Um, I mean, really, most of the holes landed exactly where we had anticipated. 
So I'm waiting on a couple more things to show up, and then I can go ahead and weld whatever brackets I need to and pre-run whatever wires I want to. But that's pretty much how that's going to look. So I'm going to go ahead and update this once I get those other things I'm waiting on. Well, we made it to the weekend, and I had a bunch of parts that came in throughout the week that I already got installed, so I'm going to show you what that looks like. I am still waiting on one more thing, and unfortunately it got delayed, so I think I need to move forward, and I'll work around that in the end. So let's show you what I got done in the last couple of days. So most of the things that I was waiting on have showed up. We're still waiting on the thin LED light bar that's going to go beneath the window to help assist with loading and unloading and being able to see what's on the bed. So that'll show up a little bit later, and I'll go ahead and install that afterwards, but obviously we're going to move on. Uh, my thin LED brake lights showed up so we got those mounted up here nice and high nice and visible our emergency lighting showed up I got that tacked into place and I'm happy with that and then obviously our winch plate is all welded down and in place so we can go ahead and mount a winch as soon as we get one and we got our exhaust stacks in place obviously they're not hooked up to the motor currently but we're making it so that the pipes can slip up into them so we can remove the pipes if we have to and we can drop the exhaust from under the truck if we have to so it's not all welded together in case we have to service anything for today, I think what I need to work on is getting the bar pulled off so I can go ahead and prep it for paint and run the wires all through it. Now our bar is removed from the truck and nice and cleanly. So I drilled my holes so I can run my wires through everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding everything down and cleaning up all the edges so I can go ahead and get a coat of paint on this thing so I can install it again and start putting all the stuff back on but in its permanent position. Couple cans of paint later and our rack is completely painted. So now I can go ahead and start reinstalling everything. Um, gonna have to leave it in the sun a little bit here so that it can tack up and then we'll start putting the lights back on. And there we have it. So I did have a little bit of a snafu where one of the wires got pinched while I was installing everything and I had to go back and fix that. So it wasn't perfect, but I was able to get it all working. So now everything's in place and I'm obviously still waiting on that bar. But for the most part, everything's there. So let's show you what it looks like when it's all illuminated. So I'm hoping that the camera is able to capture how extremely bright these lights are. They're phenomenal. Uh, I know that the camera might not pick it up, but in person, they're blinding. So this kind of represents what you would see at night. The light bar has a bunch of different settings that you can utilize. And if I want to change it, I can. Uh, I, I chose this one because it seemed the most realistic for a, a real world environment where if I had to do a night pickup, it was uh, very visible, but not hyper intrusive to the eye. But I think that's pretty much it for now. So obviously we're still waiting on that last light bar so we can wrap up the headache rack. But after that, I can go ahead and start on something else, which I think the next project is going to be redecking the bed. We're going to be covering it and then shooting a bed liner over the top of it. And then we got to start working on the ramps. So there's still a bunch of work to do before we can start doing anything with this. And we're still going to be swapping the motor and wiring everything. There's a lot to do. So if you're not already following along, I encourage you to please subscribe so that you can see how we keep up with this project. And I think that we're getting to the part where it's going to start getting a lot more exciting because I already did all the hard stuff. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. So uh, I'm pretty stoked about how this turned out and I'm going to be hitting it again hard this week. So please follow along. Wagadoo out.